Good morning and welcome back to the one Celtic fans view. Just enjoying my coffee this morning. The sun's out. It's probably going to be about 29 degrees again today. I sweat my ass off at work, but never mind. Let's just get on with the Celtic news, Baz. Uh, and don't you just love the Scottish media? Don't you just love the Scottish media? Anything to have a uh, dig at uh, Celtic and Celtic like players, and, and one in particular, Paolo Bernardo. Paolo Bernardo. I mean, everyone knows that Celtic are still in negotiations with Benfica. And the player has been on holiday, and everyone knows that it is all about what the valuation is, what Celtic value the player is at, and what Benfica value the player at. And, and what amazes me is Celtic knew the valuation with the obligation to buy over a year ago when we signed Paolo Bernardo. But some of the mainstream media have been um, saying that it's not, it's uh, the financial demands of Paolo. Uh, whatever, no, that is me. Uh, it's the it's the financial demands of Paulo Bernardo. Um, he's not on a massive amount of money, um, and I think he's one of the players that are going to come in. And it is the case of we spoke about this before in a video, and, and it's, it is the case when you look at it. Celtic have downsized the wage bill massively, massively, and this is probably one of the things that's, that's, that's um, contributed to the financial gain that Celtic have had over the last year is the reduction in that wage bill. It said that uh, he is on roughly about five grand a week. Celtic will know his salary, having paid the majority of his wages last year, but the, it all comes down to the valuation of the player. Michael Nicholson is an astute guy. Um, we have bought a lot of wash over the last couple of years, and I think it's just making sure that we get the player for the right price. Should Celtic be paying the six million for Paulo Bernardo? You've got to remember, Paulo Bernardo is the one that set up Adam Ida for the goal in the Scottish Cup final. It was Adam Ida that scored the goal, but let's face it, Paulo Bernardo grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck, grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck in that midfield, and um, when Rio Hitati hadn't done too much. I think he's worth the money. I think he's still a young player that's got a lot to just pay the money, Celtic, and get the deal done and dusted. I'm going to talk a bit more about Celtic in just a minute. There's a couple of other stories, like Matt O'Reilly's story again, and um, and uh, what uh, Atletico Madrid are willing to pay Celtic. But it's all about Scotland tonight, isn't it? It is all about Scotland. And will Jamesy Forrest... Now, are Celtic a little bit... Are Celtic fans a little bit biased because it is James Forrest? But should James Forrest have played against, well, not even against Germany, but should James Forrest play a, a part in any of the games? If not, it's a fucking been a waste of time. I'm going there. He could have went on holiday, had some proper rest time. And, and, and you know, because let's face it, Celtic are going to be back in pre-season training. And the boys that are at the Euros will get a week off after the Euro, a week. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, what a life, eh? I mean, I'm taking the whole of August off this year just because it's fucking roasting. Um, for my main job. Well, it's not really my main job. It's just the side hustle I do that pays well. But anyway, I am taking the whole August off. But uh, do you think it's uh, it's a hard life being a football player? But then people will say, look, they're not exactly working, are they? Well, they're not exactly sitting about the beach and with their missus and having a good old time, are they? When they're at the Euros. But they are there for a game. Greg Taylor... I don't think Greg Taylor's going to get a game because, let's face it, the Kieran Tierney's there and he's not going to displace the one and only Greg Taylor. Tony Ralston? Well, Tony Ralston performed to the levels that we know Tony Ralston can perform at, and which leaves one player. It does leave one player, and it's Jamesy Forrest. Now, if the manager decides to go with that stupid midfield that plays in a little narrow bit of the park, Scotland are going to get humped again. But Andy Robertson believes that Scotland's Oh, the country a result against Switzerland and Cologne tonight. The skipper rounded on critics who said they couldn't wait to have their say following Friday. I don't think anybody was criticising the team um, or the players. Because let's face it, the players were told to play in, a, in an exact formation. And they did that. And they did that to a letter. So I think that the blame for the first result against Germany has to come down to the formation, has to come down to the manager and the tactics. That's exactly it. The, pl the players, when I saw the team um, come out for the Scotland game, I thought, that's a good team. That's a good team that could have a go. But we didn't. We played a Stevie Clark. And you've got to remember, the highlight of Stevie Clark's managerial career was coming second in the Scottish Premier League with Kilmarnock. It's hardly a, a, a career littered with 
<laughs> joyous moments, then this is who we're relying on. And let's be fair, he did, he'll say, but Baz, we beat Spain. We beat Spain. Remember that? Scotland beat Spain. Yeah, they beat Spain when Scotland, Spain are going through a transition of, of blooding really young players. Spain are going through a transition where they got rid of all the, the old guards, all the old guard, the, the experienced ones, and they're laying down the foundations for years to come with young, young players. And when you see them bringing on a, a 16 year old at the championship, um, the Euros, who plays for Barcelona, when you see him play, it's, oh my God, really? And we look at 20, 20 year olds at Celtic that can't even get in the first team. It's, a, it's all about differences. And I think Scotland, although Stevie Clark has done wonderfully well to get us to the Euros and qualify, since we qualified, we've played absolutely shite. He's changed for formations. And the fact that Scotland must secure something tonight, they need to get, well, a minimum, a point, at least, if they have any aspirations of trying to get that second spot. I don't think they will. I think they'll finish third. Um, I think they'll finish third because um, they won't, that'll be in goal difference. It'll come purely down to goal difference. And I think that tanking the first game is the one that just put the nail in our coffin, as far as I'm concerned. Unless we go out and we win two games. Can Scotland win two games in the trot at the Euros? Well, people will say, look, we've done it in, we've done it in the qualifiers. We've done it in the qualifiers. Scotland need to... I mean, when was the last time that Scotland ever progressed in a major tournament? Never. Never. It's just one of those things, being a Scotland fan. She ain't being a Scotland fan! <laughs> It's fucking shabby Scottish, fucking dominated by wankers. We can't even be colonised by a decent fucking nation. We can't be colonised by wankers. <laughs> oh, I didn't like that the other day. Uh, Andy Robertson seems to be. Um, uh, of course, they are. You've got to think these players have got a lot of their pride, and a lot of these players play at the top of the game. And the, the Scotland players are quite rightly to bang the, the drum and say, "Look, we're due, we're due a good performance, and we're due to come out and show what we can exactly do." But then it all comes down to the fucking manager, if you ask me. And um, Graham Sooners disrespecting Callum McGregor on an ongoing basis. Well, what the fuck do you expect? Graham Sooners is a fucking has been that has nothing to do in Scottish football. Comments from afar, and, and you know he's like he only comments on a Celtic Rangers game. That's only that's the only time he comments. He never watches any Scottish football. He certainly doesn't watch Celtic games on an ongoing basis. They hear Chris Boyd for that nonsense, and even have him, him sitting in the studio. And he was Mr. Disappointed. Um, you can sit here all, all day and talk about Scotland, but we're not. It's a Celtic channel. And uh, I did say I would do another channel about this, the Euros, but I've been fucking far too busy. But that will all end tomorrow. The busyness ends tomorrow, thankfully. Anyway, we need a little bit of performance tonight. What do you think about Scotland and their, their, their uh, chances this evening? Um, it's a fantastic support they've got out there. And I think for the first game, I think a realistic there was, there was about 180,000 people are saying there was 250,000. Um, I'm getting reports in Europe saying that was rough, there was more like 160,000. To have 160,000 fans go to Germany and not be any trouble as such and um, to be commended by the police in the country, you've got to take your hats off to the Scotland fans. And I, I, and I, I have no idea... Because I've got a few mates that are there for back home on, on Instagram, and I have no idea how they've managed to put so much drink away. They mm. <laughs> certainly they hold up to the reputation of <laughs> being serious drinkers. Because I'm like, Jesus, man, how do you do it? I'd, I'd be like one night, and then that'd be me. That's it. I can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it, man. Um, but anyway, let's get on to Celtic. And the Celtic news, because there's a lot of trans Celtic transfer speculation kicking about as per normal, but it's coming out of Spain. It's coming out of Spain. That, well, there's the, there's two sides to this story, and there's, and there's a ridiculous one that says um, Matt O'Reilly is, is worth a fucking, uh, he's weight in gold, and another one says that they don't fancy him. But anyway, there's also a little Spanish guy that used to manage the Celtic women's team. And he's been talking about how he's obviously at Houston now, and it's the, but this is the one and only Fran Alonso. Get in there. Get in there. Fran Alonso's been talking about his time at Celtic, and he said, look, I wasn't a Celtic fan before. I went to Celtic. He said, when I got the job, I can remember getting um, called and, and texts and things from ex-Celtic players that play in the English Premier League, and he says, you're, you're going to love, absolutely love Celtic. He says, I went to Glasgow and had a season with them. Um, 
and it was obviously during the COVID. And then he says, by the time he left, due to the fact that he wasn't going to be given the money that he thought he needed to make the woman seem better, it sounds familiar, that, doesn't it? A Celtic manager leaving because they're not going to get the money that they think they need to make the team better. Um, it does sound familiar, and even in the women's team. But he has left, and he says he's always going to be a Celtic fan. Fran Alonso is always going to be a Celtic fan. Um, and that's good. That's good to know. Because there was a lot of people saying, look, get Fran Alonso for the Celtic manager's job when when it was it was more than apparent that the one and only Ange was leaving. A lot of Celtic fans were saying that. Get Fran Alonso. Because for his passion more than anything. His passion and, and fucking... I mean, it was like another it was the Spanish version of Ronnie Dyla. Just saying. Anyway, let's get back to Matt O'Reilly. Let's get back to Matt O'Reilly and Celtic transfer news. Um, it has been suggested that Matt O'Reilly is valued at a fucking stupid amount of money. I mean, there's one valuation saying up to 40 million. Um, it's been suggested in Spain that Atletico Madrid would be willing to spend around about 25 million pounds on Matt O'Reilly. And, and it's also said that Newcastle are keen. Will Celtic, it's been suggested that Celtic are holding out for closer to the 30 million. Um, I don't know where Celtic get their valuation of Matt O'Reilly from, because let's face it, the second half of the season last year, he was absolute fucking pish. And Matt O'Reilly did admit that his head uh, was all over the place. Matt O'Reilly, who speaks to a, a guru from India, to sort his head out and uh, outside football and just make sure that he stays level headed. Um, which is all good. I'm right into that shit. It's it's I don't know, it's it's good to have a, a happy if you've got a happy mind and, and you're happy within yourself, you can then go and achieve a lot in life. And that is that is true. You've got to be happy with yourself before you can be happy with anything else. And that comes down to relationships and and work and everything. Do you know? So I, I totally get where Matt O'Reilly is coming from, trying to make sure that he is in a fucking fantastic place mentally, no matter what's going on and around about him. Um, I'm a massive, massive believer on that, and uh, it's all good karma stuff. But anyway, Matt O'Reilly, um, the maximum transfer that they'd be looking to pay is around about £25 million. It's been suggested that Celtic want in the region of £33 million. <laughs> Yeah, you heard that, £33 million. Is Matt O'Reilly really worth £33 million? Or is it just Celtic trying to make sure and saying, look, if you want our players, we're sick of teams coming in and picking up our players on the cheap. Look at the whole Vir Virgil van Dijk situation. I can remember reading a, a, a thing saying, I, know, I watched a video, and people were saying when they had Virgil van Dijk at Celtic, all the, the backroom staff were like, how the fuck have we got this guy at Celtic? He's absolutely brilliant. He's, he's going to go to the top of the game. And they couldn't believe it. And Virgil van Dijk could play in any position that they asked him during training. And he was just a man mountain for us. And look at him. Um, look at him. He's, he's now captain of Liverpool when he was sold for £75 million. You know, and his teams are making massive amounts of money selling on our players. And, and maybe Celtic are right to go, look, if you want him, this is the valuation that we think that he's, he, he would be sold for at this current moment in the English Premiership. And if it's an English Premiership or one of these top European clubs, that's the valuation that you'd be looking for him. So that's the valuation that we want for him. We want to keep the player ultimately. Um, Celtic want to build around Matt O'Reilly. And I think Matt O'Reilly has still got a lot of growth as a player, a fantastic amount of growth as a player. First half of the season, he was untouchable in, in that Celtic midfield. He just, everything went for him. And the second half of the season, he did take that dip after Atletico Madrid. And you've got to think, when a team comes in and bids... 18 million for you to take you on loan and then with the, the, the obligation to buy in the summer, you're thinking, fuck me. Two years ago, I was playing on fucking a, a, a park. I was playing in a park. I was training myself on a park in London. And then this club's want to pay 20 million pounds for me, 18 million pounds for me. It's like, Jesus. That's obviously, that's, any it doesn't matter, doesn't matter who you are. It's going to sit down and go, fuck me. That's, um, that's some turnaround. But Celtic do want to keep on keep their best players. Is Matt O'Reilly one of those? A lot of people are saying, Get, take the money for him, he was shite. He was fucking shite. He shite half of the season. He fucking down tools. Fucking, fucking, uh. um, but anyway, um, 
I think that I did say that even when we went into the summer, I said Celtic will do their utmost to try and keep the player. Um, I don't think it's going to come down to Matt O'Reilly wanting to go unless it is a Champions League level that's a club that's already walked into the Champions League. And if it does be, it will be for fantastic money. So Celtic are doing their utmost to try and keep the player. Um, they want to build around him and Paolo Bernardo, etc. And then there's been a lot of talk. A lot of talk about the one and only... <laughs> It's a story that we spoke about yesterday, and uh, there, there seems to be more teams coming out. And there, there's one headline uh, saying <laughs> they want to take this Englishman back to England. Doesn't he play for America? I don't know if he was born in England, right? but doesn't, doesn't he play for America? Anyway. Cameron Carter Vicker's story seems to be growing arm and legs, but it's just as you would expect. It's silly season. And there's no chance I'm going anywhere because he's turned around and said that he's happy at Celtic. Uh, the big news, obviously, yesterday is that the, the fact that Benji Segrist has confirmed that he has left Celtic. He um, brokered a deal where he basically walked away. Fucking prick. <laughs> Mind you, we got him for nothing. We did get him for nothing. Uh, we're freeing up his wages. He was never going to make it as first team keeper at Celtic. He couldn't dislodge Scott Bain. I think it was, he was happy enough just picking up his 15 grand a week or whatever it was to sit in, in as third choice goalkeeper. He has up sticks and he's went to Australia for love. And he's missing, he's proposed to his missus in a fucking hell. A, a fucking helicopter. This is how manufactured this whole bullshit with him is. It's like, they get a helicopter to a, to a beach in the middle of nowhere. He fucking gets down and proposes to her. He's got his mate with a fucking GoPro fucking filming him. And then they release the pictures on social media. Who the fuck do they think they are? <laughs> they fucking, it's Benji Secrets. <laughs> oh, fuck. I need to get a drink of coffee before it gets cold. I can't. Did, you have, if you've not seen the pictures, you need to go. I'll, I'll, I'm not going to dig them out. I can't be arsed at this time in the morning. But anyway, Benji Segrist, this is what happened. He gets a helicopter, flies to a secluded beach. Two of them are dressed in white, like fucking posh and becks, uh, back in the 1990s. And that is true. This, this is what they were looking like. It was like fucking posh and becks back in the 1990s. And then he gets down on one knee and proposes to him. And it's like, wait a minute, mate, you're not there yourself. So who's with the fucking camera? And then they release pictures a couple of days later and you see the fucking helicopter sitting. <laughs> Oh, I can't do it anymore. Anyway, Celtic news, that's about it kicking around today. Um, there's just the usual speculation going around about players. Nothing's going to happen yet. Nothing looks, looks like nothing's going to happen until Celtic start back pre-season training. We wanted stuff sorted out. Pre-season training's only like 11 days away or something. Uh, we wanted players in. We need goalkeepers. We cannot start pre-season training with Scott Bain and goals. Someone warned us about this. Someone warned us on this channel. They said, we're going to fucking go into pre-season and now we're going to have Scott Bain and young Toby. We're going to start with Scott Bain and goals. Oh, God. I need to be more Spanish and have brandy with my coffee in the morning. It's the only way you can get through when you read headlines like that and, and when you think about it, we are going to end up, unless Celtic get their finger out. Now, I still think it is the fact that Celtic are obviously looking at a goalkeeper that is involved in the Euros, and I did say that that would be one of the difficulties this summer, is that if we are after players that are at the Euros, nothing's really going to happen um, until afterwards. But when you look at the World Cup, it was all said that we are going to sign Alistair Johnson, and he was still at the World Cup, so I don't know why Celtic can't be getting things a bit more faster done anyway we've rambled on for 18 minutes so far how the hell did i do that anyway and i think we need to do a live tonight will we go live on this channel or the other one before the scotland game tonight are you looking forward to the scotland game tonight i'm not i'm not going back to that pub i went to a pub to watch it and there was only like four folk i'm not going back to that pub to watch it i might just watch it now anyway on that note have a fantastic day celtic fans all around the world